These are notes for section 6.1, exponent properties. Uh, this would be day two of five. Now, in these notes, we don't really have any new properties to introduce, but we do need to discuss and understand um, why exponent answers are going to end up positive or why exponent answers are going to end up negative. And it goes back to some real basic math uh, when we're talking about multiplying numbers. If we remember some basic I don't even know what grade, third, fourth, fifth grade, maybe sixth grade, seventh grade. I'm not sure. Um, when we talk about multiplying negatives, if we have uh, one negative in our multiplication problem, our answer turns out negative. If we have two negatives in our multiplication problems, a negative times a negative, our answer is positive. And this is something that we should all know from seventh and eighth grade. A negative times a negative is a positive. Kids say two negatives make a positive. Yeah, when we're multiplying. So if we take that idea, because that is the basic idea of it, and expand on that with exponents, it can get a little tricky. So down here, when we have 2 to the negative 5th, 2 to the negative, or negative 2 to the 5th, I'm sorry, negative 2 to the 5th. If I were to write this out in um, product form, I would have 5 negative 2s. Negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative two. There's five of them. One, two, three, four, five. Well, two times two is four, times two is eight, times two is 16, times two is 32. Since I have five negatives, my answer is negative. The answer is negative because I have an odd number of negative signs. A negative times a negative, you could say, would this be positive? A negative times a negative would be positive, and I have one negative sign left, which makes my answer negative. Now, if I looked at negative 2 to the 6th, I would have 6 negative 2s. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There are 6 2s, or negative 2s. And if I were to multiply this out, 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, times 2 is 32, times 2 is 64. And again, if I were to figure out whether or not my answer is positive or negative, negative times a negative is positive, negative times a negative is a positive, negative times a negative is a positive, my answer is positive. So if I have an even number of negative signs, that makes my answer positive. If I have an even number of negative signs, that makes my answer positive. And that makes sense because two negatives, negative four times negative one, makes a positive, an even number of negative signs. So we need to expand on this and uh, understand it a little bit further with parentheses. So here on my next example, maybe I can zoom in. I have the same problem, negative 2 to the 6th. And then I also have negative 2 to the 6th. But one of them has a set of parentheses and the other one doesn't. So if I were to write this out in product form, again, I have 6 negative twos. One, two, three, four, five, six. I have six negative twos. So two times two gives me positive 64. Now, if I come over here, you'll notice I don't have six negative twos. I have six twos in there, and that's because I don't have a set of parentheses. So if I were to write negative two to the sixth out with no parentheses, I only have one negative sign here, and I have one negative sign here because this six is only belonging to the two, not the negative. And it has everything to do with whether or not there is a set of parentheses. If I come back over here to the problem on the left, the parentheses show that everything in here, there are six of them. There are six of everything inside the parentheses. On this one, there are only six twos. The negative does not belong to the exponent because it is not in parentheses. So I only have one negative sign. And since I only have one negative sign, that makes my answer negative. So it all comes down to whether or not we have a set of parentheses. And it's, as it says here, in the first problem, the negative belongs to the exponent. And in the second problem, it does not. So if I come down here and work through a couple of examples, because it does get a little bit uh, tricky to, to figure these things out. What we have to look for is we have a set of parentheses, which means I have five negative x's, which means well, this would be negative x to the fifth. 
I have a set of parentheses, which means I have three negative x's, which means I have times negative x to the third. Okay, so let's go back to the first uh, day one of exponent properties. When you multiply by the same base, I can add the exponents. Well, clearly this is x to the eighth. Five plus three would give me eight. Now I would need to figure out, is my answer positive or negative? Well, I have a negative times a negative, which makes my answer positive x to the eighth. On the second example, uh, if there is no exponent, we assume it's a one. So I have one negative 11 here. I have six negative 11s here. So for sure, my answer is 11 to the seventh. But I have to figure out, is it positive or negative? Well, how many negative signs do I have? I have one negative sign here. I have six negative signs here. That would give me an odd amount of negatives. So my answer is negative 11 to the seventh. And if you're not sure about this, you could simply write them all out. I have negative 11, that's this first one, times six, of, six more. So negative 11 times 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 negative 11. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have seven negative signs. Seven negative signs makes my answer negative. On our next example, uh, I have 7 to the 5th or negative 7 to the 5th times negative 7 squared. This negative does not belong to the 5. There's not parentheses. This negative <clears throat> does not belong to the 2 because there's no parentheses. So what I have is 7 to the 7th because 5 plus 2 is 7. And now is my answer positive or negative? Well, since I have two negative signs, that makes my answer positive. 7 to the 7th. Positive 7 to the 7th. Again, down here on our third, fourth example, this negative sign does belong to the exponent because it's in parentheses, so that would be positive 2 to the 6. This negative does belong to the exponent of 3 because it's in parentheses, so that would be times negative 2 to the third. 6 plus 3 would give me 9, and I have one negative sign, so my answer is negative. Uh, to expand on the other rule about uh, power to a power, and you'll notice, if you take a quick look here, these problems are almost identical, except what's the exponent that it's on the outside. So both of these exponents have a negative attached to it. This negative belongs to the two on the outside. So there are two negatives. There are two negatives. If you were to write this out, that would be negative four to the third times negative four to the third which would give you positive four to the sixth. Multiply by the same base, add the exponents. If you were to write this out, that'd be negative four squared times negative four squared times negative four squared. I have three negative four squareds. Well, I have three negative signs, which makes my answer negative. And it all has to do with the negative belonging to the exponent on the outside with parentheses. So it's a little bit tricky, but again, I know, I know it gets a little confusing. It comes back to this very basic concept. A negative times a positive is a negative, and two negatives make a positive. It's just with exponents, we have to understand how many negative signs are there, and does the negative belong to the exponent? And it all comes down to whether or not there's a set of parentheses. So let me do a couple more. This negative belongs to the two, which means that there are two of them. If there are two negatives, it's positive. This negative belongs to the exponent of three, which means there's three of them. So that is negative four to the third. There's a times in there, multiply. So when I multiply by the same base, I can add the exponents. Again, this negative belongs to the exponent of four. There are four negative signs. If I have a power to a power, I can multiply my exponents. Three times four would give me 12. If I have a power, ugh. if I have a power to a power, I can multiply my exponent. So on number 34, I can multiply four times seven to give me 28. Power to a power, that was a day one exponent property. Now, is my answer positive or negative? This negative, belongs to that exponent of seven, which means there are seven of them, 
which makes my answer negative x to the 28th. And again, this negative belongs to this exponent of 2, which means I have two negative signs, which makes that 1 to the 12th. 6 times 2 is 12. So if I do just a couple more problems here to kind of recap, let me go pick some negatives up here. Let's go all the way down here to the bottom on number 9. Multiply by the same base, add the exponent. 6 to the 6th. 3 plus 3 is 6. Okay, now, is my answer positive or negative? How many negative signs are here? 3. How many negative signs are here? 3. 3 and 3 would give me 6 negatives. 6 negatives is even. Makes my answer positive. Multiply by the same base. Add the exponents. 1 to the 3rd. Okay, let's talk about positive or negative. How many negative signs are here? Two. How many negative signs are here? Just one. So two and one would make three negative signs. Three negative signs makes my answer negative one to the third, which of course is just negative one. X squared times X to the third would be X to the fifth. How many negative signs are here? Just one. How many negative signs are here? Just one, so that's two negatives, makes my answer positive. Last one. Multiply by the same base, add the exponents. Two to the sixth. Two plus two plus two would give me six. Two to the sixth. But how many negative signs do I have? I have one here, I have one here, I have one here. That makes three, which makes my answer negative two to the sixth. Hopefully that helps. Catch you on the next one. Thanks.